Some of the major events in human history are population level consequences of individual decisions. And one that has great impact on the issue of mismatch and of the health of contemporary populations is the Great Transition. That is the phrase we use to describe the combination of the Industrial Revolution and the epidemiological transition that followed from it. That led to declines in mortality and fertility that are changing selection. The effects of change selection uh, are particularly noticeable in life history evolution. They have led to increased longevity and the exposure of antagonistic pleiotropy. The increased longevity is not necessarily the product of selection. It can simply be the product of decreased mortality rates resulting from these transitions. There have been associated impacts on nutrition, energetics, and fertility. And at the same time, there's been a major shift from infectious to degenerative disease. This is one of the most remarkable recent experiences in human history with impact on medical issues. It is probably the largest single change in human populations since the invention of agriculture. And it combines changes in three areas, labor, technology, and economics. That, in that context, we refer to it as the Industrial Revolution. In birth and death rates, age distributions, nutrition, and growth. In that context, we refer to it as the demographic transition. And in disease prevalence, from infectious disease and malnutrition to cancer, chronic disease, and de degenerative disease. In that context, we refer to it as the epidemiological transition. So these processes are continuing. They have not yet gone to completion. They are massively rearranging the human ecology of the planet. Here is a diagram that shows you what's going on with mortality and fertility. These are births per female per lifetime. This is life expectancy at birth. In this panel, which is pretty much pre-transition, you see India about 1900, Sweden about 1775, England about 1750, France about 1740. And in this panel over here, you see post-transition, Hungary, Sweden, and France. So you can see that the births per female per lifetime has dropped from uh, about six down to less than two. And you can see that life expectancy at birth has increased from somewhere between 25 and 40 years up to 75 to 80 years. That's a huge shift. Across this transition, the driver of selection on humans shifted from mortality to fertility. In this diagram, we have births per female per lifetime. That's the total fertility rate here. We also are plotting on the same graph the mortality rate per thousand. This is the mortality rate here. And we are plotting selection intensities. This is the total potential selection intensity caused by variation in both mortality and fertility rates. And it can be broken down into the mortality component and the fertility component. The time scale runs from 1540 up to 1991, and the sample is from England. So what we can see here is that total selection has declined. Mortality selection has declined virtually to zero, but selection due to variation in fertility actually has continued and it is what is maintaining selection in contemporary populations. This steep decline here in fertility rate, the slightly less steep decline in mortality rate is what is usually called the demographic transition. And if we take the decline in fertility rate as the marker, then it says the demographic transition was pretty much completed in the UK by about the, about the year 1900. The transition has major effects on human evolution. In some post-transition populations, for example, the US, Australia, and Finland, researchers found that both men and women are experiencing selection for earlier age at first birth. Women in the US are experiencing selection for greater age at last birth and at menopause, greater weight, and shorter height. And there is selection for lower levels of cholesterol and systolic blood pressure. 
In other populations, in this case the Gambia, the results differed. Selection shifted from decreasing height and increasing body mass index to increasing height and decreasing body mass index as the population moved through the demographic transition. In this case, that occurred about 1975. In one population, in Denmark, the genetic influences on early fertility increased strongly, so they were being exposed by changes in nutrition and technology. What this means is that in post-transitional societies, the reproductive window in humans is broadening. The combination of earlier age at first birth and later age at last birth is broadening that window. This may not be surprising because selection is increasingly driven by variation in fertility and therefore it's affecting traits that are associated with fertility. It is also increasing the intensity of the conflict between biology and culture. For in some of these cultures there is pressure to start having children later in life and to have fewer of them, particularly in two career families where Many women would like to delay their first child until they're in their 30s. Another issue that arises with the transition is that the increased lifespan is exposing genes that have antagonistic pleiotropic effects. The longer post-reproductive lifespans of these post-transition populations are showing us that we had previously accumulated quite a bit of effect of antagonistic pleiotropy. So those are genes that benefit reproduction early in life but have negative effects late in life. Genetic analyses of cancer risk and dementia suggest that advantages in fertility or juvenile survival are linked to the risks of these diseases in old age. And these links have been suggested for genes associated with breast cancer, with cancer in general, and with dementia. The growing global burden of degenerative disease is explained in part by the exposure of previously evolved and previously hidden costs. So these are some of the vulnerabilities that the evolution of aging has built into our genome and they are now being exposed by a mismatch to a completely new kind of environment. There are also impacts on nutrition, energetics, and fertility. The average person in 1800 was not much better off nutritionally than an average person thousands of years earlier. The great transition uncoupled cycles of mortality and fertility from the price of grain. Between 1961 and 2003, there was a 25% global increase in energy consumption. That's about 550 kilocalories per person per day. The plastic biological response to improve nutrition and growth was earlier menarche, shorter time to conception, less risk of miscarriage, and later menopause. Simultaneous changes in culture, including contraception and the cost of raising children, postponed childbearing and decreased lifetime reproductive success. Concurrent with these nutritional changes and demographic changes, there has been a big shift from infectious to non-communicative disease. I've shown this figure before, it deserves emphasis. During the last half of the 20th century, the incidence of diseases like rheumatic fever, hepatitis A, measles, mumps, and tuberculosis declined strikingly. The incidence of immune disorders, this is in the United States, the incidence of immune disorders climbed considerably. So this increase also was found for cancer, cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes, and dementia. So there's been a huge shift in the post-transitional societies in the kinds of diseases that medicine has to deal with. We can see this as a striking example of mismatch. It's really the most recent contribution of environmental change to mismatch disease. The shifts in selection pressures also measure the degree of mismatch. So in the mismatch lectures we saw that when we find mismatch it means that natural selection is operating. The causes in this case are largely cultural and are mediated by economics and technology. Some of the consequences are biological, mismatch diseases and shifts in selection pressures. So to summarize, 
improvements in the quality, quantity, and reliability of food supply and reduction in child mortality from infectious, infectious disease are sharply changing both phenotypic, plastic, and genetic evolved responses in humans. These changed responses include shifts in metabolic resource allocation and disease resistance, as well as increases in allergy, asthma, and autoimmune diseases, the mismatched diseases. Extensions to lifespan are revealing previously hidden costs of reproduction that are now expressed late in life as increased risk of degenerative disease. Navigating issues like this, in which biological and cultural evolution are interacting to change health and disease, requires facility in moving between the interests of individuals and the interests of populations. Understanding evolutionary processes helps to develop that facility and that mental agility.